This section of the video is on PE and music and how that'll be handled. Currently, the plan is that both those classes will meet and they'll be taught by the PE teachers and the music teachers, uh, which means this. We are gonna have kids going to those classes by their cohort. So for example, um, say your child was in Miss Rhea's cohort. When it's time for her PE class, Mr. Copeland would come up, he would come to Mrs. Rhea's door, he'd gather up that cohort and he would take them outside for their PE class. Okay, that way that cohort has contact with Mr. Copeland but doesn't have any other contact with any other, uh, any other students. So we haven't increased any type of exposure in any way with that. At the end of PE, they would bring them back. Uh, mask will be worn during PE unless it's in some sort of activity where they're very spread apart and there's no exposure. So like for example, they were talking about doing an outdoor yoga unit. If they have 20 feet between kids and they're outside, the mask can probably off, be off during yoga. Uh, but it is important that the mask stay on if they're less than six feet apart or if there's any chance of exposure. Music will be handled in much the same way. Uh, we're going to try and group together students in the cohorts by their music selection as best we can. So for example, if your child's in band, it, they might have Mrs. Anderson or Mrs. Shanley. And uh, when that happens, one of those two teachers would come to the classroom, collect your child along with the rest of that cohort, take them down to band uh, for their band class. They may have Mrs. Stern for orchestra work the same way. They may have Mrs. Sahowski for vocal work the same way. That way we wouldn't have any mixing. Now that's an ideal circumstance. There could be chances and times when we have to have more than one cohort in that room at a time or a portion of a cohort. And when we do that, we would uh, decrease the amount of exposure by having a um, wide separation between the two. For example, um, Mrs. Sahowski may have two groups down there from two different cohorts at the same time, but her class is gonna be taught in the auditorium. For those familiar with the auditorium, we would put one cohort in the right set of seats, have the whole middle section open, and the other cohort in the other section of seats. So there's a gap in between the two co cohorts that's probably 25 feet. So that seems manageable and seems like we can still do that. Um, we really didn't see an online way that we could do either PE or music. PE's obvious concerns why that couldn't be online. And the music, the issue there is, is you don't really have simultaneous response. Students on a, a Google Meet or any other virtual format, they can't sing at the same time. I mean, they can't play music at the same time. So that's why we're going for that format. Um, Additionally, as far as masks in these two settings, we will be wearing masks uh, in both. In PE, we'll be wearing masks unless, like I said, they're spread out or they're in a, in a, in a highly aerobic exercise where the masks have to be off. Uh, and again, they would need to be spread out for that. In band, um, we're looking into a mask that have slits in them for the plane, except for flutes, because that's impossible with a flute. And then we're also looking for bell covers to cover the end of the instruments. Additionally, the bands will be split into smaller groups. So our usual full-size band will be split into four groups. So each of the smaller bands should look to be about 20 students. So um, it's important to us, both P and music are, I mean, they're, they're part of the education of the whole child. So it's important that they occur, but we wanna make sure that they occur in a, in a safe format. 